Hey everybody, it's AJ here again, doing another shakedown for you. This is the, um, okay, so this was a late release last year. We got it at the end of last season. Um, it's a Renegade Enduro 900 Ace Turbo 137. Um, our motion, but not on the tunnel. Um, and we have got a boatload of miles on this thing. This sled, we've, we've, we have had it for quite a while. Um, definitely uh, like a season and a half. And you can tell that it's kind of unique because of that right there. <laughs> this is the first one built. So that's kind of cool. It's unique. Um, every once in a while, we get this stuff sent to us. Last year, we got it sent to us. It came on a special 53-foot tractor trailer just for us. Um, pretty cool. We're really appreciative that Skidoo sends us this stuff and does this and, uh, you know, and values our opinions on these sleds. Um, and we're going to give it to you on this one. Um, and there's not a whole lot that we don't like on this snowmobile. Really, there's just one, well, maybe, maybe two things. Um, the, the RAS3 on the front, you'll hear me talk about it on other sleds. These are just the, the standard, um, you know, not, not terribly adjustable. You just got your spring preload on a threaded collar there. Um, you know, not much to play with. They are aluminum and I believe they're rebuildable. Yes, I believe they're rebuildable. Um, <clears throat> not a whole lot that you're going to do with, with those shocks. For this sled, I think it's okay, but if you ride this too hard down the trail, it does start to do the little bit of wandering where it goes left and right as you go through the moguls if you're really pushing it hard. This is an Enduro Renegade. It's not really the sled that people are going to go out and, you know, cruise down the trail like a missile. Um, and so, therefore, I think they work okay. The Pilot uh, TS on this, the tunable ski... I think fits right in this category and works. I don't think the extra weight is really a big deal. This is a four stroke, it's a little bit heavier. Um, and for this touring uh, kind of, you know, long mile, uh, big haul rider, I don't think there's an issue with it. Um, and, and I think it works for them uh, and does well. Now, mileage wise on this sled, uh, we got definitely more than a season's worth of, uh, of mileage on this one. Let's see what we got here. I think it's uh, almost 25. 2,659.5 miles. So this thing has over 4,000 kilometers on it. I would say that that is definitely, 4,000 K would be probably three seasons worth of riding for a lot of people. Definitely two big years for most. Um, and if you put on 4,000 K a year, <clears throat> then you need to talk to my father because he's the only guy I know that puts on like, you know, six to 8,000 miles a year. Um, not the only guy, but he's one of the few people I know who can, who can rack up miles like that. Um, and he's put a lot on this one. What do we not like about this sled? Because really the rear suspension, the arm motion works exceptionally well, does what it's supposed to. It's a little bit softer because of the shock package in it. than the tunnel adjust with the, uh, you know, the clickers and the adjustment. Does it work as good as the tunnel adjust? No, it doesn't. Um, and we did find that the shocks in this, uh, in this skid, um, oh, sorry, this one's got the, what am I talking about? This one's got the air ride, uh, the adjustable shock. Um, <clears throat> it, it works okay. We, we're we not sure if maybe there was uh, just, if it just got a little bit, um, the front front arm shock got a little bit worn out on this one. Because we did find, we put a, a big ride on about, well, depending on with, when this comes out. It was uh, about three weeks ago we went out for a big ride and um, switched around sleds quite a bit. And everybody had the same opinion that, <clears throat> it felt like the rear was doing the job that it was supposed to, but it felt like the front arm shock was maybe just a little bit sagged out. So 4,000 K on a, on a shock, um, shouldn't be done, but, uh, that is a lot of riding on a, on, on a shock. So, um, especially a, a non-adjustable, you know, just standard shock under there. Sorry. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to use this thing at the same time, getting some glare off the, off the snow. Um, this sled does have a little bit of storage, not much. It's got the little, little door at the back there's some Quebec maps in there an Ontario one you could fit a couple bottles of water and a couple maps um, not huge but <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this one came with a, a tunnel bag from the factory too so that's all good you got the storage up front more maps <clears throat> look at that this thing has been on some trips um, obviously four stroke we're not seeing as much of the much of the dirt and uh, you know um, kind of grime on the on the side of the sled. Did we experience any issues with this thing? This has the stock belt on it. So this 900 turbo has the stock belt after 4,000 kilometers. That's pretty impressive. Nothing wrong with that. 
We did experience um, a reverse issue. Right now it has a reverse issue. Uh, it goes into reverse and then pops out of gear. This is a this is number one off the line. This was a pre-production, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fault it for that. It even says prototype on the tunnel, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna harp on them for that. That's 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 just something that happens to sleds when they're you know built one off. This thing was not um, built in a full run production. It was built for um, you know they only built a couple of them and sent them out. So that's that's not a that's not a fault that I can I can lay on anybody there. That's just uh, that's just pre-production stuff that happens. <clears throat> Track. This is the Ice Ripper uh, 125, and look at those studs. I don't know if I can get you guys a real good real good shot of those. That's 4,000 kilometers, almost 3,000 miles. Those things are mint. None of them are tore out. They're all there. There's no chunking, chipping, rips, nothing. In fact, this track's barely even frayed. That's impressive after 4,000, 4,000 K to have those studs that sharp and that, that nice. Like, uh, Camso's doing a good job here, people. And for those folks who say, oh, well, I'm not sure if an ice ripper is gonna be enough for me. It's enough for you. You don't need to go stud your track. Just put an ice ripper on and be done with it. They're simple, they work great. Um, resale is way better because these are safer. These are a good track. It's just the right amount of traction. It's absolutely zero hassle. It's no studs found through your snow flap because they pulled out or you put it in wrong or you, you know, hit a rock and broke something off. Um, it's not having to go recheck, retorque, end of the season, look over stuff. You're not adding the extra weight um, to the track. It's already pre-molded into it. Obviously there is extra weight to this track because it has them in it, but you're not adding weight to a track that's, you know, it just, it is what it is. It's, it's simpler. You don't have to drill. You don't have to send it to your dealership. You don't have to spend the extra money. Um, yes, there is a premium, uh, to tick the box, but tick it every single flip in time because they are a great track. And next season you can get it on just about every snowmobile, um, from every brand because, uh, everybody else figured out how to fit it into engineering uh, or into the production line. Um, so next year it's not just Skidoo who's got the, the ice rippers. Um, <clears throat> so what's my complaint about this sled? Because it sounds like I like it, and I do. My complaint is not the 900 Ace Turbo, but it is this right here. This, this whole thing, this thing, this, this whole that. I don't like it, it doesn't work right, it's not what it should be. This motor is a good motor. Yes, it has a long intake runner on it. So like the uh, like the old um, uh, the old four stroke, it, it does have a little bit of time before the before the air gets to the engine and causes causes the explosion. Don't believe me? Okay, well maybe it's a maybe it's a mixture of the drive by wire throttle and other stuff, but let me show you what I mean. We did this before, we'll do it again. There is definitely a delay in throttle response, and you do this on a two-stroke and it doesn't happen like this. If you want it to move, you gotta hold it for like a good good second. And if you do, if you if you buffer it and, and hit it multiple times. It's hard to see, but if you haven't ridden one of these, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to listen to your opinion because we put a lot of miles on these, as you can see by this one. Plus, we have, I believe, two others that we're going to be doing walkarounds on or shakedowns. Um, and that drive-by-wire throttle does not work right. It is, it is not, it is not working proper. Um, I haven't met a single person who's ridden ours who says, "Yes, that's great, and I like it." Everybody gets off and goes, "Wow, that doesn't feel right. There's something wrong with that." Um, I don't think it's the motor. I think it's the throttle. I'm a fan of a cable. I just like it. Um, the only company who was able to really make a drive-by-wire throttle make sense was Yamaha, and they did it with both a cable and um, an electronic actuator. Uh, they're the only people who've been able to do it, and I think that Skidoo should go back to a, a cable drive system. I know they've got a lot of money invested in this thing. Maybe they can make it work right. Um, and it's, it's not that I hate the technology. It's not like electric cars where I think that it's just kind of a, um, a, a non-beneficial idea for the majority of people. Um, I don't. I know that drive-by-wire is the future of pretty much everything. Uh, pretty much all the side-by-sides have it already. All vehicles have it. Um, but I, 
I just don't know if a snowmobile is the right place for a drive-by-wire throttle right now. And if you can't get it 100% perfect, and this one ain't, it shouldn't be on there. I just, and I know I sound like I'm being harsh, and I am, because uh, if you talk to anybody here, they will give you the same rundown. Um, we've all had instances where we actually feel like the throttle is dangerous, um, and, and the sled's been jumpy or done something really strange. Um, it is what it is. That's that's the deal. I think if they could put a cable system on it, which I'm not sure if that's possible, and maybe that would be a huge expense to do, but if, if they can't clean it up, I think a cable system would be so much better. Um, and yeah, that's our that's our gripe and complaint. If you if you buy this sled or if you've owned one of these and you got used to riding it for a full season, sure, you can get used to riding it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying throw the thing in the garbage. It's not junk. Um, it's just that it doesn't work. It doesn't work anywhere near as good as a, a cable operated throttle it just it just doesn't and we've all put you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles on these sleds ridden them you know for weekend long trips and um just you know pounded the miles to these things for a season and a half on this one in particular and that drive-by-wire throttle just does not work right. We don't like it. It's um, even even this year's stuff we still don't like. So that's our biggest complaint. The rest of the sled is really, really good. I do like the motor. I like the efficiencies of it. I like the power of it. It hits really hard. That top end um, performance from the 900 Ace Turbo is surprising. You'll be really shocked. I know everybody says that it's, you know, oh, well, it's not an 800 or it's not an 850 beater. The top end on this sled is really surprising. Sure, it's not a Yamaha or Articat turbo beater. No, it's nowhere near horsepower wise. You know, it's probably 40 to 50 horsepower less, but this thing will run with 850s. And if you don't if you don't get off the line good, it'll beat you. Um, it's a really, really good performer. It performs, yeah, the, the engine performance is great. It's just the throttle. And um, once you're past about, I would say, once you're past halfway on the throttle into two thirds, uh, everything seems to respond okay. It seems to be working just fine. It's it's from throttle tip in to halfway throttle that gives us um, kind of the, the the unpleasant experience. And you'll if you put time in on it, you know what I mean. Um, it's just kind of that 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 sort of rubber band feel. Um, you get on the throttle and you know you're you're running your thumb because we all do that. That's the way we ride a snowmobile. You know we we kind of we kind of blip the throttle a little bit and it just it surges it hits it just just the slightest bit after you expect it to um and it's hard to get used to so anyways my biggest complaint on that but other than that <clears throat> really happy with this sled um front arm shock it's got 4000k on it so i'm not really going to gripe plus it was a pre-production um it was a prototype i'm not going to argue about that the reverse thing again first sled off the line so there's no there's no fault there and we didn't hear about any issues this year with the uh with the reverse setup and we didn't have any issues with our other sled with the reverse setup so everything was fine there um all in all the enduro is a nice package uh rides well does what it's supposed to and if you're putting on high miles you know trail touring that kind of stuff really really great sled super comfortable uh maybe maybe one thing i could say is um a lot of other touring sleds in this category do come with a heated seat. This one does not. And I think, yeah, that's right. This one does not, right? Yeah. I just got to make sure. Oh no, you know what? I apologize. This one does come with a heated seat. I'm completely ridiculous. Yeah. So the heated seat option, um, I was thinking of a different sled. Uh, the heated seat option on this is super nice. And that's one thing that I think this category does need is heated seats because they are I mean, I'm not, I'm not that old, but I'm getting older and I definitely, um, enjoy the benefits of a heated seat on a really cold day. It's, it's really nice. Uh, the seat on this sled too is super comfortable. You can see the, the kind of shape of it and, and the foam. Um, it's, it's super spongy. It's got lots of room there. Um, works really good. So anyways, yeah, apologize about that heated seat thing. It's the other turbo that I'm thinking of that doesn't. So this is the 2018 slash 19 renegade enduro um first one off the line it was a limited build pre-production prototype whatever you want to call it but this sled worked really good just drive-by wire that needs to change the the skidoo drive-by wire system we're we're uh and we're expecting that they will come up with it skidoo they're no they're no fools those guys they know what they're doing they've come up with great technology over the years and they'll continue to and they will refine this they'll fix it they'll figure out what to do whether it be put a cable back on or or get that uh that drive-by wire system working properly so i um, hope you guys enjoyed thanks for tuning in thanks for watching our stuff um, you can comment below join in on our facebook uh, chats and comments check us out on instagram um, and keep watching uh, all the videos we're putting up uh, we appreciate it and i uh, hope you guys have a good summer and 
We'll see you next season. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.